So hi everyone, thank you for taking the time out to join us today and to uh, join the Lunch and Learn session uh, kindly organised by Michael and the team at Sage for Spindle Document Management. Now when we do the session today, uh, we're trying to kind of, I guess, hit the medium point of, I know a lot of people on the session today will have come across Spindle Document Management already. So for yourselves, it's about maybe picking up a couple of things in this session that you didn't know about the product and that, you've, uh, that you can pick up and you didn't know that it did and we can kind of expand a little bit on those points. But also I'm conscious that we'll have some people on the session today that don't really know too much about Spindle Document Management. And obviously for them, we want to be able to, uh, I guess, fill them in and, and bring them up to date on the product. So we're going to try and put something in here for, every, uh, for everyone. Uh, as Michael mentioned, I'm joined by Zoe today as well. Uh, I think Zoe's going to stay quiet in the background for the main presentation bit. And then we're going to, uh, Zoe's going to answer the questions as we go through the session. And I'm sure she'll chip in as well if she's got anything to add. So the way we're going to structure the session today, we'll start off with a little bit of PowerPoint. Then we're actually going to go in and have a look, little look at the product as well. So you get a good uh, look and feel of that. Finish off on the pricing and the licensing side of things and then focus around questions at the end. So hopefully that sounds all right to everyone. Uh, if there are any problems with the session as we go through, any sound or anything like that, pop them on the, uh, the questions tab uh, and uh, Zoe will kind of uh, shout in because I'm not looking at the questions tab as we go through it. Okay, great. And I think the session wise, we'll probably, look, you know, we're not looking to take up the whole hour. I think uh, 35, 40 minutes and we should, be, uh, we should be good to go on to lunch after that. Okay, great stuff. So hopefully everyone knows document management. Document, Spindle document management, we've been around for, well, I guess over sort of uh, 12, 15 years now as a product in its various different formats. Dracer as an organization, we're based in the, the Midlands, so our head office is in Leicester, but we sell our software throughout the UK. And we actually work with Sage across the world as well. Now, when we're looking at solutions today, we're going to look at Spindle Document Management. Now, for some of you on this demonstration, you'll remember Spindle Professional 20 years ago when it was created. Um, and then later on, I think about uh, probably seven, seven or eight years later, we created Document Capture and they were separate products and all of uh, that kind of history. But in terms of where we are now with the product, Spindle Document Management is one solution. And that incorporates Spindle Document Distribution, which is very much around our outbound uh, distribution of documents from Sage 200. And then we've got Document Capture, which is all around those inbound documents, storing, archiving them. And then really where we've put a lot of development is the focus and the link between the two. So we can send out documents that we've stored um, and then we can also archive documents out that we're sending. In terms of Dracer as an organization, we also produce a number of different other products. So when someone's on the Spindle document management suite, they then have the ability to expand the use of document management at as and when their business needs it. So for example, if they're looking for to automate something like purchase invoice automation, they can look at Spindle document recognition. If they need a portal for their customers to log in and view documents, then they can look at Spindle self-serve. If they need some approval process, we've got Spindle approvals. All the way down to now is when we're sending out these finance documents, you know, invoices and statements, if people want to make payment via open banking, card uh, transfer and so on, um, then we can introduce things like pay them. So the idea with Spindle document is that starting uh, point, and then we can build on that as we go on. And it's kind of that building blocks as and when organizations need to. So when we look at the distribution side of things, and again, it, we don't want to focus too much on the PowerPoint. So what I'm kind of trying to really focus on is the, the, the things that make us a little bit different out there and um, work outside, I guess, the norm. But a big part of the uh, Spindle document management is the distribution of documents. Anything I produce, from within Sage, I can then send out. So that's our invoices, statements, remittances, credit notes, and so on. And what we're looking at here is more than just sending them out via email. It's looking at the distribution of documents as a business process. Uh, process. So who do I need to send them to? What variations of those documents are there? Who else needs to see copies of those documents? What else can I attach at the same time? And then where do I need to archive that uh, document so I can view it back really easily in the future? So we can send them out in batch and single, but we can do things like add attachments on. Now, we'll look at in the demonstration today and the examples, there's loads of different attachments that you can do. So when we're sending out a statement, we can automatically go and attach all the invoices that relate to that statement as well. It might be that we're sending out an invoice and we want to go and attach things like certificates of conformity or any um, documents that support that particular invoice. It might be that we add our standard terms and conditions on as attachments. Spindle can do all of that. And the key thing for the user is it's really quick and easy and simple for, for them to do. 
anything that we send out from a distribution perspective can be archived instantly into Sage 200 against the account and the transaction it relates to. So invoices um, can go against the invoice transactions, purchase orders against the uh, purchase order transaction. And you know, if it's something like a statement, we can store it against the account. The key thing is as well that with the distribution pieces, we can also pick up documents that are distributed from outside of Sage 200. So for example, we've all got a lot of those customers that say, yep, yeah, I use Sage 200 for my core finances. However, we produce our invoices from this other system. Now, as long as we can get the spindle distribution element to work with this other solution, which often we can because of the flexibility in the way that spindle distribution side of things works, then in theory, those invoices can be sent out of ABC solution, separate away from Sage, and then when we post that data into Sage 200, as we would do for our financial reporting, then at the same time, those documents, those invoices, as once they've been sent out via Spindle, can automatically be archived and linked in Sage 200 so that when I go in and look at that invoice transaction within Sage 200, I can view a copy of the invoice, even though that invoice wasn't produced from within Sage 200 itself. Now, things like that are really critical for people when they're producing those invoices, maybe from outside of Sage. If they're doing it from within Sage, fantastic. Obviously, it's dead straightforward. We can make sure those documents are archived. Other things we're looking at from a distribution perspective is who else internally needs to see a copy? So as many of the partners on the demonstration today, you've all got salespeople, account managers. So at the same time as sending those invoices out to the customers when uh, new orders are placed or when renewals and so on, we can actually send a copy internally. We can say, yep, you know, here's the account manager, well done, an order's been processed on your account, and they can get a copy of those invoices as well. But it could be credit notes to finance managers. It could be only the overdue statements get highlighted to an account manager, so they can see that that account's overdue, and they can mention that in any future development, customer development meetings they have. We can enhance corporate identity, very simple for people who have a single branding, but there's lots of businesses out there that have multi companies of Sage. And each of those companies, whilst they might be quite similar, can have different logos, different branding, different attachments, different terms and conditions. Again, Spindle can handle all of that. So from a user perspective, they just create a document and print it via Spindle. Spindle will do the rest for them. And then the big thing we're focusing on at the moment with a lot of Spindle users, and it's really, really kind of grown in popularity is around the instant payments piece. So at the same time as sending these invoices and statements out to our customers, giving them the ability to instantly make payment on them via um, paying by card, instant payment links, as we say, to the open banking, uh, all these kind of ways that they can go in and they can quickly make payments. Meaning from a, your customer's perspective, they get paid quicker, they can receive that cash um, really, really quickly, instantly and it helps improve the cash flow within the business so although you know we're very honest the ability to email has always kind of taken over and it is very much out there in the market now even within the standard sage product it's really looking at the distribution piece as a process of really enabling customers to look at the way that they produce documents and send them out and being able to make that really streamlined process from a capture perspective it's then all focused around those documents coming into the organization as we mentioned before, everything that Spindle sends out, it will automatically archive for you. So as we just create invoices, statements, credit, as, as we create them as we normally would do, deliver them by Spindle, Spindle will archive them. So I don't need to do anything from a document management perspective. However, what I do need to focus on is obviously those documents coming into us from third parties and being able to capture those documents. So it might be that we need to scan those documents in on a one by one basis. We can use barcoding if we need to scan them in batch. We can drag and drop those documents in. And they don't always need to be a document. It could be an email, it could be anything supporting that particular transaction. We've had everything from people using uh, our iPhone and Android app to take photos of broken windows, to have photos of finished machinery that's been installed. Um, and the great thing is we can store as many of these documents against those transactions so that we can always look back in time and say, yeah, actually we, we realized what happened on that particular order. We've got a picture of the finished item we can see the full audit trail and, and full story around it. And then if we need to send those documents on, well, we just drag and drop them back out again. We're not storing documents in filing cabinets, having to scan them, send copies and so on. When we're capturing documents in a batch format, we can use barcoding to do it. So we don't have to walk to a scanner every time. You know, use a small little Dymo label printer on your desk. It means that as we're processing paper, we print out a little barcode, stick it on the document, put it aside, move on to the next one. At the end of the day, gather them all up, pop them on the scanner, 
scan them in and they'll automatically get archived against the account and the transactions they relate to. So even if we are dealing with paper, we can get it in an electronic format in a really quick and easy way. Most notably for those examples will be things like purchase invoices. If we do a large bulk of them and we're getting them, or goods in notes is another really important one. You know, it's pieces of paper that we're receiving as part of the warehouse. Why not barcode it and get it added? So then we've got an electronic copy. We've always got that stored, something to relate back to. And the great thing that once a document is in the document management system, we can automatically attach it to anything we send out. Now that can be signed dispatch notes going out alongside the invoices. So we're saying to the customer, look, here's the bill and here's the proof that you signed up, uh, you signed off at, at the same time. It can be things like certificates and conformity that are held um, against stock items, uh, batch numbers, uh, certificates of analysis. We work a lot in the airline industry when the people need to pass uh, those certificates of analysis on. So when we send the invoice out, Spindle will automatically say, okay, I've got the invoice. Here's all the certificates that relate to the batch numbers or stock items that relate to this particular invoice. Let's attach them to the email as well. Now, for people who do these kind of things, this is a manual process. I can't just send out invoices of Sage because I have to create my invoice, pop it in my drafts. I then have to go and collate all these documents manually. The idea is Spindle will do all of that for you. Even items of finished work, you know, they can be attached to invoices. So it's really working with customers to give them a full rounded solution rather than just saying, yeah, we can send a document out via email, that's fine. But actually, when you get into their business process, that's not what they need. That's not what they're doing. And actually, we can build really, really good value around this. In terms of the benefits, obviously, of the capture and the document um, distribution piece, it's all about reducing the need to keep manually for, uh, manual documents, especially in the world we live in now, if people are remoting into VPNs, into Sage and so on and working from home, then they can still get access to those documents uh, when they get onto that network. They're not having to say, right, I need to leave that one till Tuesday when I go into the office and look at the filing cabinet. So they're really easy to find. They're linked against the transactions. We don't need to keep the paper-based formats anymore. We can put security around them. I mean, we're the best one in the world. Customers always kind of question out the security and they talk and ask it when we do demonstrations, particularly around electronic documents. But how secure are paper documents? You know, can anyone walk into a filing cabinet, grab a document, not sign for it and sign any process that they've taken it out and just walk away? With an electronic uh, document, there's always an audit trail. There's always a trail to say that can't be deleted. You can't remove that. We can back it up, which is a lot more than what we can do for the paper based documents. The other big part about Spindle document management is integrations. So we have a free to use API. One of the fantastic things around Sage 200 is how flexible it is, how uh, we can uh, do lots of development to get it to way it work the way that customers want it to work. And that can be anything from, uh, from just tweaking the solution to creating whole new interfaces and screens that the customers can use. And the great thing with document management is we have an API and that API can be used to integrate those document management controls into any of those um, custom developments that you've created, whether that's whole other systems or whether that's just new screens. We obviously use that API to work with a lot of other uh, ISVs that are out there in the market. That's people like Equi2 Construct, where document management integrates, uh, Sim200 for manufacturing, uh, Sycon Manufacturing, Sycon Project, Sycon WAP. Document management works with all of these, along with obviously working with the rest of our own ecosystem like purchase invoice recognition and Spindle self cert So what it means is depending on you know, whatever direction you want to go for Sage 200 and whether, you know, if it's manufacturing, you want to move, take them to an alternative manufacturing solution to Sage manufacturing, Spindle Document Management can be kind of, I guess, the one constant in that because it will work with all those other solutions out there in the marketplace or certainly on the Sage price list. Okay, so we'll come back to that side of things in terms of uh, the installation and the idea today is we're just going to run through some examples of what Spindle Document Management looks like. So in terms of here, I'm going to come in here and uh, just create a new order. We'll probably work through sales order processing. This is all pretty standard stuff from uh, a Sage point of view. But this drop down here is where we, where we look at it from the Spindle document management point. So I'm going through sales order processing. And at this point, I want to either capture a document from a file. I want to scan a document in. I could print a barcode out. Or I could go to our pending tray. Our pending tray is like a holding area between ourselves and accounts. And that's where people from outside of accounts can put documents into there. Um, they could put them in or they alternatively they could use our iPhone app or uh, iOS app so that they could actually take pictures of documents and upload them into that pending tray area. Then from us in accounts, we can go in there, we can look, decide what, what uh, and where we want to link those documents. In this case, I'm going to capture a document from a file. 
and therefore Spindle Document Management will give me a nice pop-up asking me what I want to do uh, and how I want to kind of capture that document. So in this case, I could just do a Windows Browse to the document, or more likely, you know, if we go through a bit of a more realistic example here, if I come over to my inbox, the chances are that I've received a purchase order and I'm going to take that purchase order and I'm going to archive that into Sage at this particular point. So now here I'm going to drag and drop over our actual purchase order, the one that I've just keyed in. I keyed it in before everyone joined today because I'm sure everyone knows that's a key in a purchase order in Sage. But the, the critical bit in this is it doesn't actually have to be the document. It could be the email itself. You know, how many customers will, and even us as partners, uh, for example, you don't actually always get a physical document. It's, uh, yeah, go ahead with that. Our order number is this. And they just write it on an email. So I could drag and drop the email over. It doesn't have to be the physical document. In this case, I have got the document, so I'm going to capture our purchase order. If we actually have a look at the purchase order itself, we're actually going to store all of this metadata against it. Now, this purchase order will always be linked to my uh, sales order transaction. So that's absolutely fine. However, what I can do is we've got an external search tool within um, document management, which means that I can give and search for these documents in a different way. Think of it like a search tool for your filing cabinet. If I know the transaction, then I go within Sage and I look at the transaction. I see this order against it. However, if I said, OK, well, let's have a look at all purchase orders that we received last week. And that would be harder to find within Sage because I'd have to go and find my range of documents, find my range of transactions, and then find the, the documents accordingly. But actually with the search tool, I could put that criteria in. So we can do criteria-based searching. And actually customers love that feature um, because it means that they can just come at their documents from a different angle and start looking at bulk documents and ranges of documents rather than just lots of one-on-one -on -one documents. Now we have lots of different document types and that's the other great thing about document management is you can create your own. Obviously as the software, we ship it with purchase orders, invoices uh, uh, and so on because everyone does, does those st uh, standard finance documents. However, you could create your own. You could come in here and put a customer service email. It could be miscellaneous information. It could be a photographer uh, and so on. So you can create your own document types. And if you do that, again, we can capture them. We can view them, we can search them. So I'm going to archive my customer purchase order here. And then let's go through. And we're going to create uh, an order acknowledgement. And some people don't do auto acknowledgement, some people do, some people don't because it's just another manual process. The great thing about Spindle is it's not a manual process to use. All we do is when we create any document within Sage, we print it out to Spindle as our print driver. So in this case, Spindle Pro Auto, press OK. It's as simple as that. We'll send that out by email. We can send it to an individual. We can send it to group emails, multiple email contacts. They're really, really flexible. We can even change who the email's coming from. Our sales-based emails can come from sales at email address, where our purchasing come from a purchasing at email address. Um, so really, really straightforward for the user to use. If I come over into my Outlook here, and I'm going to come into my drafts, we'll see a, a statement in there in a second, and then we'll start seeing our sales order confirmation that's just come in here. The great thing with Spindle is we can use HTML emails. We can create all of our own branding and corporate identity within them. So again, trying to move the customer away from plain text, please find attach your document. It's amazing how many customers out there still do very, very plain looking finance documents. You know, we all spend so much money on marketing. It's really about carrying over that brand and that consistency in all the touch points that we have with our customers and suppliers. In this case, you know, things like side portals uh, and side messages, what else can we get across at that point? I've got a copy of our sales order attached, as you'd expect to see. We've added all of our logos and branding to the document, so it looks a lot um, consistent with all of our uh, corporate stationery. In this case, we've added the terms and conditions of sale, so we've covered ourselves from a legal standpoint as well. And at the same time as sending that order confirmation out, I've also gone and attached the purchase order that I was sent literally a couple of seconds ago. So even though we've captured and scanned that document in, that can get automatically added to anything then that I send out. If we carry on then through the process of sales order processing, we can go to look at something like a picking list. So if I just do that for a single order, we're just gonna do this for this example that we're working through here. 
And again, we print off that picking list to Spindle. Now, quite often with a picking list, it's just going to get printed out in the warehouse. Um, but why would we print it via Spindle? Well, we can print it via Spindle because Spindle can offer a bit more benefit around that. Yes, we can print it off on the warehouse uh, printer, but at the same time with Spindle, we can also add a document management barcode to it. Now, because it's a document that we've produced that we want to then scan back into the system, then we can go ahead and we can do that. So if we come back over to our picking list, so what I've actually done here with Spindle is I've got it to do three different things at once. We've created that picking list, we've printed it to Spindles. First thing Spindle's done is printed it off on the printer in the warehouse. It's also then sent a copy to the warehouse manager, letting them know that there's a new picking list ready to be printed. And on both copies of those picking lists, we've also added a Spindle document management barcode on there. So if we open up our picking list, and again, you can work with other third parties who might control that picking list as uh, creation. But again, all we're doing is adding this barcode to it. What this barcode means is this picking list can go out and get printed. Then at the end of the day, um, once it's been signed off uh, and picked, we can then scan that picking list back in and it will automatically get archived against the account and the transaction that it relates to. Most specifically here, the order. So if we want to build up that audit trail, it's exactly what document management allows us to do. So if we carry on going through our process here, we can then confirm and dispatch our goods. At this point, I might want to go back and think, OK, I just want to go and check maybe what was on that picking list. I might want to go and check what was on the original purchase order. We can instantly drill down to that and get access to those documents and we can view them straight away. For the purposes of this, let's confirm and dispatch our goods. And then we can obviously go and uh, attach a copy of the uh, and send out a copy of the invoice. Again, in this case, what we've got Spindle doing is doing multiple things at once. So if I send that out to Spindle, our dispatch note firstly can be sent to the customer as confirmation that the goods are being dispatched. We can also then print a copy off in the warehouse and we can also send the warehouse manager a notification of the, um, the dispatch note as well. So we're sending all of these three automations at once, but from a user perspective, all I've actually just done is just created a document and sent it to Spindle. Again, in addition to this, you could have different brands and different divisions within it uh, and Spindle will automatically pick that up. So for this, our customer has been sent a copy, dear Haley Bass, attached to the copy of your dispatch note. They get the same dispatch note, but we can make it a little bit more customer facing. And at the same time, we've sent an internal copy and also printed it out on the warehouse. So we're doing multiple things, even though Spindle's only been actioned the once. And on that dispatch note, we've got a copy of our barcoded dispatch note. That can go out with the goods. Now for some people, if they use a third party delivery company, that won't come back. And therefore, what they'll do is they'll just archive the dispatch note as a copy against uh, the sales order transaction. Alternatively, if it goes out and gets signed and does come back, then obviously we can put the barcode on it and we won't archive it until it comes back into the organization. Once it comes back in, we can then archive it and it will automatically get archived against this particular uh, sales order transaction. Once it is archived, we can then complete the final part of the process, which is then printing and creating that invoice that we send out. And as we mentioned, there's lots of different variation we can do on this. In this example here, I'm thinking the way I have it set up, I'm just going to print out an invoice and send it. But if there were certificates or supporting information associated with the stock items, because in document management, we can store information against uh, batch numbers, serial numbers, stock items. If any of those relate to the order on the invoice, then when we're sending that invoice out, Spindle can automatically go and attach those documents and also attach them to the invoice email. So for people who do those processes, this is really, really valuable for them and saves them a massive amount of time. What we can even do with Spindle is if a document is missing. So say, for example, every time I send out an invoice, I always need to attach a certificate against it. When we deliver those documents out, if Spindle ever comes across an invoice that doesn't have a certificate attached, it will automatically put it into your drafts folder. So what you end up with is automation of all your documents going out with the right attachments. And if any have that attachment missing, then we won't send those documents out. And therefore, you can then process them and go and attach them manually. So I've confirmed that despite my goods here and my invoice is going to be sent out as well. So if I come over to my Outlook, then we'll see in a minute that my invoice will come through. When I'm sending the invoice out to the customer here, it's going to have a number of things in. We're going to send a copy internally to the salesperson 
and we'll also send a copy out to the customer. So first of all, this is our customer copy. You can see that we've got instant pay links within the actual email itself. I open up a copy of the attachment. We've put all our branding and logos on there. We've got a terms and conditions on the last page. You can see here, and then we've got our instant payment link. If we open up our instant payment links, then we can see here that we've got a payment link where the customer can go in and they can pay by card. Using pay them system, we can also upload a copy of the actual documents as well. So if I click on here, we can get and view a copy of the invoice. So some people don't attach to the invoice. They use the payment link and say, click here to view your invoice and make payment. And therefore they can see the invoice this way. The other way that they tend to use it is via looking at something like a statement. So if I print out a statement to Spindle, you can see that with our statement email templates, and I did this one a little bit earlier on just because it's quite a long statement to do. We've got a different email template, so everything's configured on a document by document basis. And I'm putting through our aging information, whether it's current 30, 60, 90 days overdue. Got a copy of the statement attached. We've attached all the invoices that relate to that statement. But what some people will do is not attach all the invoices, and instead they'll have the copy of the statement attached. They'll have an instant pay link on the actual uh, statement body. And then when you click on that, statement as well as stamping it overdue if it is overdue obviously if it isn't overdue we wouldn't whilst clicking on that pay now button we can come in here if we have a look at our statement request we can see that i've now listed all of our invoices on our statement as separate transactions now what that means from a user perspective is i could come in here and say first of all i could view a copy of any of those invoices if we weren't attaching them to the email so i can go and see the original ones and i can also select the ones i want to pay so actually I could say, yep, yeah, that one's not overdue and I don't want to pay these two. And ultimately then I can go through and take my next steps in order to pay by card. Once you get payment, those notifications are sent, sent internally. So we've got lots of scenarios where uh, people like warehouse managers and so on getting notifications of when payments have been made on invoices. So the orders are ready to go. All of those kind of things. So you get those internal notifications. Coming back to our example here, let's close all those tabs down. So all of our documents have gone out, but at the same time, we're also archiving them against it. Now I could view them here uh, and do them inquiries as a sales order. But once we post those transactions through to Sage, then we'll see them in all the other areas of Sage where we want to view those documents back. So for example, here, if we come over to the sales ledger, and let's do a transaction inquiry. Let's look up our good old friend, Abbey Retail. And we can see that I've got a transaction here and they've got five documents stored against it. Now you've always got the ability to add further documents to it. We never close off that archive. So if we want to go back and we want to add further documents, again, we can. And that's the other form of the document management integration. So we're talking about you know, a drop down in terms of areas of capture, and a view button, and we've always got the ability to view those documents. If I click on that, in this example, then I've got everything from my customer purchase order, order acknowledgement, proof of delivery, proof of picking, and my sales invoice, all stored in one against that particular sales order. Now, those invoices will also be linked to all the other areas within SageMail, might want to view that information back, most notably somewhere like the nominal ledger, for example. So in the nominal ledger, I can come in here. Now we can also add documents in the nominal ledger. If you're doing um, journal entries, for example, it doesn't always have to be a physical PDF. It could be an Excel document, for example, supporting information for your journal entries, and you can add that in. In here, we can see that our invoice has been created, and that invoice then flows through to the nominal, so I can see a copy of that sales invoice, and I can get access to that in here. So it's really capture those documents once and you'll be able to view those documents across all the other areas within Sage where you'll be able to view them back. Now this is just sales order processing as an example, exactly the same works for purchase order processing, capturing a quote, sending out a purchase order, capturing a goods received note, capturing the purchase invoice. Um, all of that kind of information can all be captured uh, as part of that process and it all works in the same way. So wherever I am within Sage, you know, even just as here, for example, I'm in the sales ledger, I want to capture a credit note. You've got your document capture controls in here where we can come in and the customer can add that information. 
So a couple more things around document management and then we'll kind of um, summarize it and we'll go in and have a look at pricing and licensing. Obviously viewing the documents within document management itself, but many people don't realize that we also have a search tool for document management. But this search tool can be used by non-Sage users, even if they're on, the, as long as they're on the same network, they can come in here. So if you've got salespeople, for example, they could use this as an interface to come in and look at invoices, sales invoices. But the key thing is it's controlled on a user basis. So we wouldn't be able to allow them to look at things like purchase orders or purchase invoices. The idea is we can control what document types and the security around that. In this case, I can come in and look at Abbey Retail and all the documents that relate to Abbey Retail. But it can also often be used by Sage users that want to do a bit more of a criteria-based searching. So in this case, I want to look at Abbey Retail and I want to see maybe all um, da, 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 sales invoices for Abbey Retail. And we can drill down and we can look at that and then it will also offer me I actually want to look at sales invoices that were invoiced this week. And again, it can then drill down it further. Now, if that's a purchase invoice, for example, we can search all purchase invoices against a nominal or cost center. So really giving you that ability to search across documents outside of Sage. And then from here, I can view them. I can get access to the document and process them as I wish. The other big thing around document management is security. So these documents are protected. They're protected for a certain period of time. Uh, in this case here, we have a, a deleted documents area. So firstly, you have to give people permission to delete. But and then if they do delete the documents because they've got permission, they don't get deleted. They come to a background holding area. And then what we'll see when we look in deleted documents is even though they have been deleted, some of those documents have security against them. In essence, as soon as they're archived, a stopwatch starts against them. They can't be deleted for six, seven years. Some people have longer periods on that. Until that, once that time period is up, the padlock will be released. Once it's released, though, it's still down to the user to decide as and when they want to archive it, um, or as and when they want to delete it, should I say. My computer's on a particular go, so I must know it's lunchtime. So we can see these documents here, for example. I might say, yeah, I want to delete them, but I can't because they're protected document types, so we've got security around the documents themselves. So really from a document management perspective, it's about offering customers a solution that's really quick and easy, but functionality rich for them to be able to use the product. And that's really why we've got thousands of users and thousands of Sage 200 users that use Spindle Document Management every day, day in, day out, to capture, produce documents, view their documents and manage their documents in a really quick and efficient way. Well, obviously, if you wanted a more in-depth de demonstration than that, then please speak to us, uh, your partner manager, and we'll be able to line that up for you. But again, today is really just a case of giving you a bit of a flavor of what Spindle Document Management looks like, and also some kind of hints and tips and maybe some parts that you don't know around the product that you might have picked up, even if you've worked with Spindle Document Management for, for many years. When we look at the sales process for Spindle Document Management, it's really, really simple, really straightforward. As Dracer, we're a business that really focuses on our business partners and making it as easy as possible for our business partners to sell and support our products. From a business partner point of view, you know we appreciate you just want to sell solutions that you install, you have happy customers, and then you almost don't hear about it again and you move on to your kind of your next project. And that's what we always aim to achieve with Spindle Document Management. The installation time is pretty straightforward, one to two days. As part of that process, we just need to do a scoping of what documents that they do and what they want installing and configuration. And then you've got your user training on there. This is all designed to be done by yourselves as the business partners. Uh, the sales cycle is really straightforward. An online demonstration of probably no more than an hour. And then it's just a case of understanding how many document management users they wish to have, how many view users. So that's the two licensing types. You either have the ability to send and capture documents and view them, or you just have the ability to view them. That's it. It's unlimited companies, pretty much unlimited mobile users. So all you're quoting for is the number of management users, view users, your consultancy time, and that's it. But quite a straightforward sales cycle. Um, from a demonstration point of view, you know, the team at Dracer are more than happy to get involved in demonstrations uh, and really support you with that. So the sales cycle, I mean, we have very, very common scenarios of people having a demo that day and then deciding to purchase it, all the way down to, you know, we're going to inline it with upgrades and so on, and therefore it becomes a bit more of a lengthy process.
a copy of our prices can be found on our partner portal. But the big thing, I guess, um, we're always, I guess, so proud of with Spindle Document Management is customers love it. So this is a quote here from a Sage 200 user, you know, case studies and things like that. We're always keen to do with business partners and we'll come into that in a second. But uh, really, we allow the product to, to do its own talking, which is how many people use it uh, and really the great customer feedback we get from the solution. So to finish off with on the second, just before we go into questions, as I mentioned, Drater, we're a you know, really, really focused partner business. So it's all about us providing our business partners with as much resource as possible to, uh, to sell and support our solutions. That's everything for document management. We've got things like uh, PDF leaflets. We've got videos. We can offer online demonstrations through your partner managers and our, our sales team. We can do on-site demonstrations. I think we all try and avoid them a little bit more these days, but if it's really necessary, we can come on site with you and support you of that. As Sage 200 partners, you all get the software to use in-house and that's free of charge, so you can use that. Uh, you can have demo licenses if you want to demonstrate the software yourselves. We've got email templates, case studies. So if you have got a case study that you want to um, create, then we're happy to do most of the work for you on that. If you know the customer and a contact and they agree to it, We'll contact them, we'll do the questionnaire, we'll write the case study for you, and then we'll work with you in order to sign that off, and then you can use it just as much as we can. Uh, web content kits to create website pages, social media kits uh, to create social pages. We've got lots of blogs in there as well, where you can do uh, more, I guess, um, more topic-based marketing rather than, you know, here's a product, do you want to buy it? You know, very much is about thought leadership these days, so we've got loads of blogs on our website. Um, in order to create more thought leadership around document management. Um, we can do sales training with your sales team in order to have discover opportunities, and then obviously technical training. All of our technical training is currently remote, so you can sign up for that. It's free to sign up, uh, and we have an ongoing uh, technical training course on all of our solutions. Okay, so from a whistle-stop tour demonstration side of things, that's everything we were looking to cover today. Zoe, have we got any questions? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'll go through uh, some of the questions. If any of you got any more questions as I go through these, then um, just uh, pop your questions in the questions tab. Um, so we've had a lot of questions coming through on uh, what uh, the product works with that Thomas has uh, kindly shown us today. And um, so I'll wrap all those up in sort of one answer. So we've had a question, uh, does Spindle work with, say, Standard? Uh, does it work with X3 as well? So the answer is actually uh, the same for both of them. So I'll put those both together. So the distribution element, exactly what Thomas has shown today, is achievable with both Sage Standard and also Sage X3. The only element that doesn't work with both of those flavors of Sage is going to be the archiving. However, you can swap out the archiving from the little view button in Spindle to where, you know, where they want that to be, whether it's on their network somewhere or whether it's on SharePoint. So there's still archiving there. It's just put elsewhere outside of Sage. And um, so, yes, yeah, Spindle document distribution only. So none of the capture elements at all. Um, also, a question on uh, compatibility is, does it work with SPC? So your Sage Partner Cloud? Yes. Yeah. Definitely uh, works no problem with those. In fact, we've got quite a lot of customers uh, using Spindle uh, with Sage uh, Partner Cloud. And um, as you're going through the licensing structure there, Thomas, we had another uh, question. Uh, can you still buy distribution only licenses? So, of course, in the case of Sage Standard um, and Sage X3, yeah, because that's the only one it is. Sage 200, um, I would not be recommending selling distribution license to them because they're going to lose out on some. Uh, you know, the archiving functionality and things like that as well. So stick to your full users and also your view users whenever you're selling to Sage 200 Professional. And the worst thing is, is they've done a demonstration, we've showed them all the bells and whistles, and then actually, then they've bought something completely different, it's not doing what they want to do. So it avoids all of those sorts of things as well. Um, last question on licensing was, is it concurrent licensing? So it's actually named user. As with the majority of Dracer products, it's named user the licensing uh, for Spindle document management as well. And then the last thing that I wanted to put in, it wasn't a question, but just something I wanted to add, and it's something I'm doing for a lot of my partners at the moment, and it is being, I would probably say I did a few in uh, last year, and it was probably the most successful webinars that I did, was hints and tips on Spindle document management. 
I speak to so many existing users of Spindle that are not using it to its full capability. I'll ask them, what do you use Spindle for? Oh, I use it for invoices and statements. And literally, that's it. There's so much potential out there. And the other reason I'm saying it, you know, never say to any user that's interested in document management, oh, yes, yeah, Spindle, you use that for invoices and statements. Because as you saw from the demo today, there is so much potential behind it. So even if you have an existing base, 100% recommend speaking to your account manager, whoever that may be, and ask them, can you do me a hints and tips webinar for Spindle? because you can invite anybody to that, an existing user, but also prospects as well, and they're going to see every single element that Spindle does. And as I say, it's definitely the most popular webinar that I do that gets all the numbers going, because I see it's a hints and tips, so it's not really a selling webinar. It is, we all know that, um, but it's a really good one to do. So uh, I think that is it. Yep, that's all the questions that I had. None of them have come through there. So. That's it from the question master. That's me. Good stuff. Cheers, uh, cheers, to Zoe. So I think uh, on that note, you know, just from I guess from Zoe and I, thank you very much for everyone's time, and uh, I'll hand back over to uh, to Michael to wrap up the session. Excellent, guys. Thanks very much. I think we've all got customers who could benefit from using Tracer, and and like what Zoe said there, there's probably things that they're using which is only a fraction of it. So if we can ha highlight those and and get them into using more, it's going to be a quick win for everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Um, thanks very much, guys, for coming on today. I really, really appreciate it. it was, and it was really interesting because I only knew a fraction of what I've known today. So it, 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 it's excellent. Thanks again. Um, so, so from me and from Sage, the Partner Success World, we've, we've got a couple of things coming up um, to make you aware of. So our Customer Success um, Partner Academy um, section is going to be uh, going out in February. So look out for that. If anyone isn't on the Academy and, and wants to know more about it, just drop me an email. Um, so it's, we're going to be doing the partner success course, which is going to be a, enabling you guys to have more um, data rich conversations with your with your customers and doing health scoring and, and, and checking their satisfaction levels and things like that. As far as lunch and learns go for, for later in the year, I've, I've got a couple lined up. For, so we've got one for uh, the 29th of February that's going to be run by uh, Paperless, but I'm going to be sending out proper comms about that later. In, uh, later, probably next week, and then we've also got Modular doing their uh, salary supplier payments one. So uh, that that covers things like say 50 accounts, say 50 payroll. We're going to be talking about mainly 200 though, so that that's going to be a really good one. That's going to be on the 14th of March, um, and I'm just getting those in now because I've got a bit of a, a bit of time off in Feb due to uh, due to a little bit of light knee surgery. If you can have light knee surgery, um, so. Any questions, guys, around today's session or anything at all for future sessions, just drop me an email. You'll have Thomas and Zoe's emails uh, as well after the session. So please, as always, complete the survey. It helps us shape these sessions and gets your feedback to make sure if you want to hear more from them. So I mentioned on the previous session, due to feedback on the on the Go Cardless session on the survey, we're going to be putting another Go Cardless session in probably when I return back from the knee surgery to go in a bit more in depth in the product so again as always guys really appreciate your attendance really appreciate your feedback and as always if you've got any questions just just reach out but thanks again thomas and zoe really appreciate you guys giving us your time today and uh and hope everyone found it really useful thanks everyone Lovely. thank you thanks guys Cheers. all the best bye. now bye bye, bye. bye.